Every time India test fires a missile, you hear the names Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Island Launch Complex and ITR Chandipur. Where are these two test ranges located? And what's special about their geography that compelled the DRDO to build its test range here? We'll discuss all this in detail in this video. Welcome to another episode of India's Strategic Geography series. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to the ARC. The Abdul Kalam Island is one among a group of five islands in the Bay of Bengal, situated 7 to 8 kilometers off the east coast of India, near the Dhamra port in Odisha. The island was originally named as the Wheeler Island after the English lieutenant Hugh Wheeler, but it was renamed as Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Island in September 2015 to honor the former president and India's missile man Bharat Ratna Dr. Abdul Kalam. Close to 70 to 80 kilometers north to this island lies the integrated test train Chandipur near the Balasore town in Odisha. ITR Chandipur is a 17 kilometer long stretch of coastal land along the Bay of Bengal with all the necessary infrastructure installed for missile testing and evaluation. But how come these two sites became India's premier test facilities? Sometime around the year 1982, the Government of India launched the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program or the IGMDP to develop strategic missiles, taking India's defence requirements into consideration. India's Defence Research and Development Organisation or the DRDO started looking for a suitable site for the launch of Agni series of missiles. Earlier, DRDO used to launch its missiles from ISRO's Sriharikota range because they didn't have a test range of their own. A site near Chandipur in Balasur district of Odisha was identified by the DRDO as an interim test range to test these missiles. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam was appointed as the first director of this test facility, who was also leading the IGMDP program. Maiden test launch of re-entry technology demonstrator AE01 was conducted from this test range on 22nd May 1989, a first of its kind in India. Over the years, the interim test range turned into the integrated test range after installation of electro-optical tracking systems, S-band, C-band radars, telemetry systems, etc. And it has evolved into a state-of-the-art, world-class test range. But when and how did a deserted island far from the shore become the Abdul Kalam Island launch complex? There is an interesting story behind the island's discovery and clearance to build a launch complex there. This is a story about two of India's stalwarts who contributed immensely in their respective fields to India's success story. Sometime around July 1995, DRDO conducted successful test flights of the Prithvi missile, but the Indian Army suggested a flight test on a land range to validate its circular error probability. At that point, it was not possible to test the missile in Rajasthan or in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So they started looking for a suitable location for the missile's impact test. They found five tiny dots on India's geographical map about 70 to 80 kilometers south of ITR Chandipur. These were the Wheeler Islands. Then the search for these islands started. Two of Dr. Kalam's colleagues, Dr. S.K. Salwan and Dr. V.K. Saraswat, who retired as Secretary DRDO and is currently a member of the Niti Aayog, left for Dhamra. From Dhamra, they took a boat and started searching for the island. By the time they reached the island, it was already dark and they had to stay in the deserted island for the night, surviving only on fruits. In the morning, they started surveying the area and found the island suitable as a missile test launch facility. After that, the process to acquire the islands as a test launch facility began. All the necessary clearances were taken and the Ministry of Defence and Odisha government started processing the request. But the final approval was to be taken from the Chief Minister of Odisha. Dr. Kalam then wrote a letter to the then CM of Odisha, Biju Patnaik, explaining the requirements of these islands. And 10 days later, a meeting between the two was scheduled. When Dr. Kalam arrived for the meeting, CM Biju Patnaik warmly welcomed him and signed the approval in his presence to hand over the islands to DRDO. Then Biju Patnaik, a daredevil pilot and a legend himself, said in a demanding tone, and I quote, Kalam, you have to give me a promise and an assurance to the nation. The day India makes its own intercontinental ballistic missile, I shall be stronger as an Indian. There was silence in the room. 
Dr. Kalam then replied, he would do his best to make this happen. And guess what? Dr. Kalam kept his promise. India developed the Agni series of missiles with ranges varying from 700 kilometers to 8000 kilometers. In his book, Ignited Minds, Unleashing the Power Within India, Dr. Kalam has fondly recounted these events. And you must read this book to know about this more. Abdul Kalam Island, as I mentioned earlier, is one among a group of five islands. There are no bridges connecting the island with the mainland. It's only accessible by ships. There is a helipad on the island, but no airstrip to land bigger planes. All the missile components and other supplies are transported by ships and from there carried on railway lines. All necessary testing and evaluation systems are spread across the island. But why here? What exactly are the geographical advantages? First of all, take a look at India's map. On both the east and west, we have vast seas that are ideal for these missile tests. But on the western front, proximity of Pakistan to the Arabian Sea is not ideal. Secondly, because of presence of sea lanes of communication in the Arabian Sea, shipping activity remains high in this region all year long, primarily shipping oil from the Gulf countries. Hence, frequent missile testing is not feasible. On the east, we have the Bay of Bengal, on which shipping activity remains low. And also it's easier to issue NOTAMs, as air traffic on this side remains slow. Secondly, a significant portion of the Bay of Bengal is under India's control. And distance of other neighboring countries like Bangladesh and Myanmar from our shore is high. It makes the situation ideal for missile firing. The depth of the sea, the climate of the region are also optimal for missile testing. All missiles are different in terms of range, capability, launch platform and mission objectives. Like a ballistic missile like Agni has a completely different trajectory and weapon loading capability than the Brahmo supersonic cruise missile. Similarly, a beyond visual range Astra missile has different technology and mode of operation than the anti-tank Nag missile. The integrated test range is established as a test and evaluation center to provide safe and reliable launch facilities for performance evaluation of rockets, missiles and other airborne weapon systems. In the integrated test range, all the individual subsystems of a missile are tested and proven before handing them over to the armed forces. This entire process includes real-time tracking and validation of the missile's speed, altitude, trajectory, range, accuracy, and control and guidance systems, etc. from its take-up point to the point of impact. This tracking is conducted by the sensors, radars, telemetry systems, and photoprocessing systems deployed all across the test range and aided by the satellites. Now we have understood the geographical significance of the ITR and Bay of Bengal. In the Far East lies the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, which is strategically located and is extremely critical for India's geostrategic interests. We will discuss the strategic geography of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in detail in a future video. But it's important to understand that the island chain gives India a significant strategic advantage vis-à-vis -vis China. To counter this threat, it has been reported that China has been investing heavily in this particular island in the North Andaman Sea. It's called the Cocoa Islands. It's an archipelago which Myanmar controls. In recent times, it has been observed in satellite images that infrastructure development in the island is going on at a fast pace. From land reclamation to airstrip expansion, from construction of naval pier to installation of radar station, all these infrastructure developments have clear Chinese footprints. Reports suggest that China has built a SIGINT facility in the island to specifically monitor the Indian missile launches into Bay of Bengal from the integrated test range. As you can see, its proximity to the Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Bay of Bengal is alarming. 
if china develops necessary infrastructure and installs electronic tracking equipment they can monitor each and every indian missile test and gain first hand information on its speed altitude range and other capabilities which is deeply worrying there is another concern with respect to the abdul kalam island which has expressed even during its formal handover to the drdo and it's an ecological one as you can see on this map the island is in close proximity to the vitarkanika national park which has the second largest mangrove ecosystem in india to the east of the national park lies the gahirmatha beach which is famous as the world's largest rookery of olive ridley sea turtles every year lakhs of olive ridley turtles travel long distances from the indian ocean up to the gahirmatha beach to lay eggs on the nasi 1 and nasi 2 islands this phenomenon is called arribada a spanish term meaning arrival by the sea the mass nesting continues for around 10 to 15 days and 45 to 60 days later the hatchlings emerge from the eggs and start their journey towards the sea however frequent missile testing have caused problems for the turtles in 1997 noted environmentalist banka bihari das drew attention of the then chief of drdo dr kalam towards the flood lights installed on the island the bright lights disoriented the hatchlings to find their way to the sea dr kalam promised to make arrangements to ensure safety of the turtles since then the lights were dimmed and testing was also restrained during the nesting season another concern for the island in recent times arose due to climate change which is sand erosion hundreds of meters of sand areas have been eroded in recent years and submerged in the sea sand patterns around the island are rapidly changing prompting the government of india to consult iit and niot to come up with solutions to protect the island from sand erosion the integrated test range is very critical for india's defense needs it has seen development and testing of a wide array of strategic missiles like agni prithvi akash brahmos astra trishul nag prahar pralay etc development and validation of these missiles paved the way for their induction into the armed forces and the strategic forces command considering india's challenges in the region and the threat perception of today for the safety and security of the country itr's importance has become immense it has served india's strategic interests for years and will continue to do so i hope you liked the video please like share and subscribe my channel i hope to see you soon with a fresh and new video thank you